All right, I'm going to walk you through how to set up a Zoom meeting. You should go to zoom.com and uh, download it, and that's the first way to go. You're going to um, do a login, which I have already done because I use this a lot. Then I go to my account, and this shows the different information that I can do. But I'm going to go over here to meetings, and I'm going to schedule a meeting. And when I schedule it, I can put any topic in you want. You can put your uh, meeting description. So I can say that, um, you know, it's a meeting, a playwriting meeting, and then meeting description. That's just for your own edification. How long you want it to be. Um, what time it's going to be, which is um, in Eastern time here, but it will show differently. You can make it a reoccurring meeting if you want. Um, you can require registration, which means that not everybody um, will automatically be granted access. They'll need to have pre-registered. I don't recommend doing that, especially if you're just starting out because it can be tricky. You can have a meeting ID that is generated automatically or have your personal meeting ID that you're going to set up when you set up your Zoom account. I tend to, for certain things, just use my personal meeting ID because I have to start the meetings and it's just easier. And that way you're, you don't have a million different um, IDs out there. But if you have something that you don't want people, it's a one-off, then you might want to generate uh, automatically a new meeting ID. Um, then you're going to say... Um, that you want to turn on people's uh, audio and video or video when they start. So when you start, your web camera will be on. And when they start, their web camera be, can be on. That is completely up to you. I have been starting it, especially for teaching with everybody's web cameras on. And then your audio, you can have a computer audio, a telephone audio, or both. Choose both just in case, and I realize for a lot of people this won't will defeat the purpose, but you may have people who have to call into the meeting, and that way it will generate a phone number that people can call when you, you schedule the meeting. Uh, you can set different meeting options. You can have people join before the host. Before you start the meeting, people can automatically be there. You can mute participants upon entry, which might be helpful if you're expecting a lot of different people. You will be driving the bus so that if you're not sure how to unmute them, then you want to toggle that off. So for your class, um, its size, depending on what it is, you may want to um, have them able to talk and then shut it down later on. Um, you can enable a waiting room, which is if people log in early, they'll be put into the waiting room so that they can um, wait for you to start the meeting. Um, and you can also tell it to record the meeting automatically. And that may be helpful if you're doing something, uh, if you've got a meeting or you're doing a rehearsal and not everyone can come and you want them to be able to see it later. And it will download onto your computer or in the cloud. Um, I do it on my computer, um, a video that you can then uh, put online, you can get captioned, you can do whatever else. Um, and you can put not other um, folks in here as well who can be hosts um, for the meeting. So if you can't start it, then somebody else can. So when I save that, this is what it looks like. I have my meeting. It's today at 4. Um, this is the meeting ID it, it had in here. Um, it has the join URL has all the other things. I can always um, delete it. I can edit it. I can start it from here. But you can also copy the invitation, which has all of this information, including the phone numbers in here. And that's really helpful. And it's interesting, too, because Zoom is adding more and more phone centers um, as people are using it. So you can copy this meeting invitation, and you can put it into an email um, that you send out to people. You can also just use the Zoom link um, and send that out if you'd like. You'll notice that when people call in, they are using the meeting ID 
ID is the meeting ID that they put in to get into what is basically a conference call. So if you're trying to do a conference call, you can use Zoom for that as well. So that's how you do it. Now, if I start this meeting here, um, it's going to look like this. And it will be launching my Zoom meeting. And it's right here. And I have it starting with a video. And I said no, but if I wanted to start with a video, I'm going to do that here. I can log in um, and have it go. Since I'm recording this, it's not letting me do that easily. Um, so this is how it's going to look. If you, um, once you're in, and we're starting, and I will work on another meeting, and I'll get some um, recordings for that, then you can see up here, you can either have it so that the speaker is highlighted when they um, are there, or where you are going to um, have a, here, maybe I can do this, I'm going to look scary, so if I'm be ready, um, uh, you can have it so that you have the different thumbnails of all the different people who are in the meeting. So depending, when I'm teaching, I only have 12 people in my class, I'm going to have all of the different thumbnails there. And so um, up in this corner, you will see that when you're setting up, when you're in Zoom, you can set it up that way. And this is another, if you manage participants, you can go there. If you have chat, and you click here, people can be typing into chat so that if you don't, if you have muted participants, they can still participate in chat. And this is the share button. And if I'm going to share my screen, I am going to click this. And it will say, Julie, which screen do you want to share? So if I wanted to show you all my calendar, I would click there. You can click your iPad. You can put a bunch of different things. Don't make it too complicated for yourself, but just know that this is how, if you have a PowerPoint or something, a document you want to share, you can share this. So I can, um, I'll share this screen, even though it's the same, right? And then up here, you see that I have all of my different toggles here and I'm just going to say stop share right there and I go back to be having the meeting and being in charge of the meeting. So that's how you do that and when you hit end meeting it is going to um, give me an option which is on my other screen of the, that we're going to be um, saving the video. So it's not super challenging. Let me show you one more thing that you can. Once you've got the um, Zoom app on your computer, when you double click it, this is what it looks like. So you can join a meeting just by clicking there and typing in the ID. So if somebody else sets up a meeting with you, you can join a meeting and then you can type in an ID or a personal link name and it will um, let you join the meeting. You can connect to, uh, not connect to audio and you can turn off your video, which is helpful um, so that when you do that, it's really good. When you get this screen as well, and I have a pro account, so I have some other bells and whistles that you may not have, but the free account is also really useful. Um, the pro account when I clicked this here, this is the window that came up. And here I can play with, um, you can see that this is where my video is, but my other monitor is here. And um, so I've set that up here. I can use my user facing um, video. I can change to what my web camera, but my web camera is being used to, um, to film this, so I know that's complicated, but you can choose which one you want. You could choose your rate, uh, your ratio. You know, do you want it widescreen? Do you want this? Um, I could touch up my appearance, which might be a nice thing. 
see how that works. Um, you can, um, you know, always show video preview dialogue when joining a meeting. I ask that it do that just so I can make sure it works. Um, all of these are options that you can do and you can add, um, but you should run them through before you go into a Zoom meeting. You shouldn't wait um, to do it afterwards. And then audio wise, um, this is, I have, you could test your speakers and you can test your mic and make sure that they're going to work for what you need for Zoom. So that's another really helpful thing. And chat, you can include the link preview, you can include your um, status here. Um, you can, you know, you can tell people what you want to do with um, chat as well. Virtual background. Um, if I downloaded that app, I could make it look like I'm sitting in front of the Golden Gate Bridge or whatever. As you can see, I mean, because I teach online, um, I have that different stuff there as well. Um, you can tell it some more stuff about cloud storage. There's a whole bunch of things, but the two that you really want to care about are your video and your audio settings and run those through um, before you start. And again, you do that by um, opening up the app on your computer, clicking the little thing over there, the little wheel, and then this field will come up and look at video and look at audio right there. So I'm going to make this video available to folks, um, but I will also um, uh, set up a webinar so that we can talk about it and I could show you some more things that way. Um, thank you all so much. Bye now.